Hello again, Mr. Shoulder. Miss Bearman. I've still not been able to gain permission to excavate from Mr. Bryden. Is that so? Perhaps you could show him something that might change his mind. I've still not... Yes, perhaps... What else can you tell me about this Saxnot? Try not to worry yourself too much with these old stories. Leave those to the locals, Miss Bateman. Have others spoken of goblins appearing in their dreams? A dream is a dream, that is all. They merely make for good stories. I know, I know. But to answer your question, no, not to my knowledge. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Shoulder. I'm sure the locals have filled you in already, lass. You cut quite the mysterious figure. Most had little to say. It's true. I do tend to keep me head down. When one gets to my age, one grows very comfortable in one's home. I like the isolation of the moors. I wouldn't change it for anything. I take it you don't get many visitors? Oh, no. Nobody bothers me. That's the perk of living so far out, huh? Just me and me hands. I used to come into Bewley more often, back before me health went to buggery. What do you think of Bewley? Whilst one could consider the villages to be rather unenlightened, this place has its charm. The market's in town today. You can see that folk want for now, dear. What else can you tell me about the previous excavation? I think I covered it earlier, Miss Bateman. As you yourself said, it were a time of superstitious hysteria. Is there anything else I should know about Hobbs Barrow, Mr. Shoulder? No, lass. I'm certain we will know a lot more about it by this time tomorrow. I hope so. What was it like, living in that period of hysteria? I kept to myself. It didn't really affect me. My hens stayed healthy and their eggs kept me well fed. If one can keep a level head in such situations, one can get by. Indeed. Is there anything else I should be aware of before my own excavation? No other ghouls I should be worried about? Ah, you know the answer to that. The corruption in that soil were all in the minds of men. What do you make of Lord Panswick? His lordship is an important man in Bewley, as I'm sure you have gathered. His family has commanded much respect here for many generations. Do you respect him as a leader? I do. He wants the best for the village. Without his influence, the railway line would have never come through here. Does he want more visitors? Aye, I believe so. He has great ambitions for Bewley and wants to share them with the world. What do you make of Mildred Walker? Who? I believe she's also known as Mother Mildred. Oh, we used to get about when we were children. Our paths have not crossed in a long while. What do you think of Charles Bryden? He is a decent man. It must have been hard for him after that terrible business with his brother. Without a doubt. I must say I had assumed you had at least spoken to him about my visit. Sorry, lass. I had no intention of giving you the runaround. Again, I can only apologize. If you don't mind me asking, what is the nature of your ongoing illness? Oh, just the ravages of age. Getting off this bench will be a small battle in itself. Something you won't need to worry about for many a year, Miss Bateman. Growing old is a blessing and a curse. And what of your recent fever? An ordeal it were. So much tossing and turning. But I'm right as rain now, especially after a mug of ale. Don't worry about me. What are Lord Panswick's plans for Bewley? He's rebuilding an old chapel on his estate. He seeks to bring God back to these lands. But what of St Edmunds? I think Father Roach might argue God has never left. Indeed. Let's leave such arguments to them, shall we? Thank you for your time. Aye, Miss Bateman. We will speak more later. Hello there. Yes. My name is Thomasina. What's yours? Ted. Ted Cross. Pleased to meet you. Likewise. Are you a local, Mr Cross? Oh no, I'm just passing through. 
I'm a musician. Just myself, me guitar and me horse. Are you a travelling musician? Aye. I've been playing a new song tonight. I've just finished the lyrics. What's it about? You'll have to come listen. Is that your horse stationed in the alley? Aye. Thistlecrack is her name. That's an unusual name for a horse. Aye. It were what she were called when I bought her. Glutton would be a better name. She likes her treats. But it feels wrong to change it. What do you make of Bewley? Can't say that I know much about this place. I don't usually travel this far south. I see. Have you heard of a place called Hobbs Barrow? Can't say I have, miss. What is it? Never mind. Thank you for your time. Make sure you watch my performance later, won't you? I'll try. You found old Leonard, I see. Yes, finally. I've had some rather unbelievable news, Stanley. Oh? Remarkable. Quite the coincidence, is it not? Remarkable. Just remarkable. Do you recall my father from back then? I'm afraid not. Those were my droving days, you see. I didn't spend much time in Bewley, but an interesting turn of events nonetheless. What do you know of Mother Mildred? I'll tell you what I know about Mother Mildred. She wants locking up. How so? She owes me a small fortune on her tab from years ago. Do remind her next time you see her, won't you? I'd rather not get involved, if you don't mind. Be careful who you trust, Miss Bateman. Does the name Saxnot mean anything to you? No, I can't say it does. Hmm. Goodbye. See you soon. Good day. I'm still setting up my stall. Come back later. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Long mustn't be in. I don't need to go in there again. Hmm, no one here. I don't think anyone is home. It's locked. No, that's not it. I can't think of anything else to talk about right now.
Good day, James. My dear. How is your painting coming along? Quite well, but it needs more work. I'm aching to show you, but I must restrain myself. Goodbye. See you soon, my dear. I can't think of anything else to talk about right now. I didn't come to Bewley to sweep their streets. The bucket is rusty and full of holes. The bucket has seen better days. Perhaps this belongs to a merchant. This must belong to someone. I should leave it alone. I don't wish to carry around my heavy excavation tools. No, that won't achieve anything useful. I don't wish to wake him up. That's not mine to take. I could tether a horse here if I had one. The post has been embellished with a fine bronze bust of a horse. I don't wish to lose an eye. I'll have to gain her trust. I'm not sure what that would achieve. Hmm. The window box is well out of reach. Fresh and steamy. Delightful. I believe a horse to be the culprit. Nobody home. Look, Mr. Bryden, my father's journal. It confirms he was with your brother during the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. Ha! <laughs> Take that away from me. I'll be having none of that. What do you make of this stone, Mr. Bryden? It was strapped to my father's journal. Wait a minute. Let me see that. By God. Wait here a moment. I need to get something from inside. I waited for what felt like an age. And I realised that Mr. Bryden must have been in a great debate with himself, wondering whether or not to share his own piece of the mystery with me. The goat stared at me, seemingly in pity, as I stood there in that rolling fog. Finally, Mr. Bryden emerged. Now then, as far as I know, what I have here is the only thing that Samuel brought back from Barra. Take a look. In a pair? That's been in my drawer ever since Samuel passed. I suppose it might be important, so I kept it safe. Fate is clearly playing a part in your arrival, lass. Please, Mr. Bryden, allow me to excavate Hobbs Barrow. A place that is no more than dirt and stone. <sighs> You're not going to give up, are you, lass? I'm not. Samuel managed to say one thing about those men that helped him. I think it's time I tell you. Yes? He stuttered out that one of those fellows could barely walk after they got out of there. Tongue-tied two of the men were. My father. You what? My father. He had an accident around 25 years ago that left him bedbound and unable to talk. Aye, could be him. My mother told me it happened in a horse-riding accident. 
Samuel boarded up that barra for a reason. Something unnatural occurred, I know it. Mr. Bryden, we must rely on our rational faculties to explain any... Promise me you'll be careful. Any sign of trouble, leave without hesitation and we board that accursed place up again. Understood? Wait, you're giving me permission to excavate? <sighs> Aye, against me better judgement. I don't have the energy to stop you, lass. Thank you so much. I am grateful. Don't make me regret my decision. Take Samuel's stone. Are you sure? Aye. Give it back to me when you're finished, though. I promise. Thank you. I'll be sure to show you my discoveries, Mr. Bryden. I'd rather you don't. Now then, I've got things to get on with. I don't suppose you can spare any labour to help me with the dig? Don't push your luck, lass. Market's on today. Plenty of able-bodied men about. ta -ra now. And like that, I finally had permission to excavate Hobbs Barrow. As exciting as that was, I was distracted by what Mr. Bryden said of his brother's associate. There was no doubt in my mind that father was the stricken man he spoke of. You told me he was crippled after coming off his horse. Why did you lie to me? To protect me? To stop me from following in his footsteps? You failed. And so did Charles Bryden. He should have said no. He should have never given me that stone. In good time. The produce is not mine to take. Good day. Hey, up. What do you make of these stones? Don't look like out to me. Thanks for your time. Aye, speak to you later. Hello, Miss Tompkins. Hello. We weren't introduced earlier. My name is Thomasina. Ma'am? How do you fare, Miss Tompkins? I'm waiting for Mr. Ambrose. Have you seen him? Who's that? The milkman. Ms. Fenchurch will be ever so cross if I've no milk for his lordship. I'm afraid I haven't seen him. You are in the employ of Lord Panswick? Aye. He employs half a bullion one way or another. I'm in need of some help for my excavation. Do you think his lordship could lend me some of his labourers? Maybe. Might you introduce me to him? Sorry, ma'am, but his lordship doesn't take visitors. Any road, I must wait here for Mr. Ambrose. Ms. Fenchurch will be ever so cross if I've no milk for his lordship. If Mr. Ambrose doesn't turn up and I find you some milk, would you be able to introduce me to Lord Panswick? Hmm. His lordship really doesn't like visitors, ma'am. I'll take the risk. Miss Fenchurch will be cross with me. But she'll be even crosser if I come back without fresh milk. So do we have a deal? Aye. Bring me some milk and I'll take you to his lordship. Thank you. But hopefully Mr. Ambrose will arrive soon. Have you been waiting long for Mr. Ambrose? Aye. He should have been here a good two hours ago. He's here every market day, you see. He sells only the freshest milk. Miss Fenchurch swears by it. I hope Miss Fortune hasn't befallen him on his way here. I'm sure he will turn up. Oh, I hope so. Are you familiar with Hobbs Barrow? What's that? Never mind. What do you make of these stones? Oh, gives me the creeps. Why? Dunno, just a feeling. Who is Miss Fenchurch? His lordship's housekeeper. I'll let you know if I find some fresh milk. Thank you, ma'am. But tell me if you see Mr. Ambrose, won't you? I will. Can I interest you in a pie? Finest mutton in all the county. Two pence each. No, thank you. You're missing out. Perhaps you'd be more interested in a scotch egg. Freshly made, just one penny each. No, thank you. 
I really don't want a mutton pie or a scotch egg. Good day. Freshly picked apples, miss. Would you like to try one on the house like? Yes, please. Here you are, miss. The apple looks somewhat rotten. It's riddled with holes. The worm has found a new home within the holes of the rotten apple. I'm not sure they would be interested. Good day. How did you like your apple? I'm afraid it is rather rotten, sir. Hey up. That slander, that is. Don't you be going around telling folk I'm handing out rotten apples. Good day. Fresh produce. What have you got for sale? I'm selling meat, vegetables and all sorts of herbs and things. You're welcome to have a gander. I'll be sure to browse. Do you have any milk for sale? Not today, sorry. Goodbye. Ta-ra, miss. Hey, girl. Would you like an apple? She is completely indifferent. Perhaps the apple is too spoiled for her liking. No, that won't achieve anything useful. I don't wish to interfere with her water. He took one. That's a peculiar idea. Here, girl, eat this. Good girl. Hopefully, that's gained some trust between us. I don't wish to ca I've managed to cut off a few lengthy strands. There we are. This should make sufficient bowstring now. I've done it. The bowstring seems to hold on sufficiently. I should ask Mr. Bryden for permission before attempting to milk his goat. What do you want? Do you have any fresh milk going spare? <laughs> if you can get any milk out of old Eunice, you're welcome to it. Eunice? Me goat. Good luck. Girl, would you like an apple? <laughs> the grumpy thing isn't interested. All right, we are doing this.
I... I... I'm not sure what that was. I don't know what's happening to me. All this superstitious nonsense must be getting to my head. <laughs> I'm not going near that thing again. I should ask Mr. Bryden if he could milk the goat for me. Well, did you get any milk out of her? I tried, and failed miserably. <laughs> uh, she's a temperamental beast. Perhaps you could milk her for me? I'd like to help you last, but I've just had a flare up in me joints. I've worked myself too hard this morning. I couldn't bend down to save myself. Is there anything I can do to help? <laughs> My wife would say I'm beyond any help. I'm certain of that. But if you know of any remedies for aching joints, please send them my way. I'll see what I can do, Mr. Bryden. I'm going to rest for a while. Ta-ra now. <laughs>